We're here at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh, and we're down in the ultralight area, which is my favorite part of the area. There's so much going on here that I find charming that we just have to keep coming back and coming back, and sometimes we see stuff we've been looking for. In this case, it's this airplane behind us here. I'm Dan Johnson, talking with James Weeby, who is gonna describe things about the flying of the chipper now. We talked about chipper before, a couple of times in fact, but it hadn't been flying at the last time we talked together. So since then, you've put this engine on. Tell me about the engine that you chose first and why, and then I want you to, we'll ask some questions about how it flew. Yes, well, here we are. We uh, ended up with the Rotax uh, 912 UL engine producing 80 horsepower. Uh, we'd originally had an HKS on it, but we've moved on to this one. Provides a little bit more power. Uh, this was a brand new engine when I put it on, and I've got to tell you, I can't be more pleased with both how this thing has performed and how reliable it's been. Well, you know, the uh, Rotax, of course, has a wonderful reputation, and almost everybody tends to go for the 100 horsepower. It's not much more money. I get why everybody goes that way, but I personally love this 80 horse because it is just about as bulletproof as they get. Uh, yes. Not that the other one's not a good and reliable engine, but you're, when you ask a little bit less of it as this does, uh, it does great things, plus it uses different fuel. Tell me more about it. Yeah, well this engine here, first of all, it's uh, of those two engines, this is the one that runs on 87 MoGas. The other one can run on MoGas as well, but you have to have a higher octane. So as a result, you can run this on any gas that you can find on the pump whatsoever. In my case, I was doing all my test flying, burning four gallons an hour at two bucks a gallon. Eight dollars <laughs> an hour direct operating cost. And as you mentioned, everyone that I talked to said of the two engines, this is the superior engine. The other one's good. This one is like without defect. It yes. just works. Uh, that's been the experience of so many people. Again, I say I get that people, more horsepower is good, I guess. But you know, you've got a fairly light aircraft here to begin with. And if 80 horsepower gives you the performance you've talked about, well, talk about it. Yeah, well, first of all, I think you're being unkind when you say a fairly light aircraft. <laughs> we may have the lightest two-place aircraft in the category. All right, what is the empty weight? Uh, okay, we Let's weighed put a number it, on it. it uh, we weighed it right before we came and take it with a grain of salt because I couldn't believe it myself, but it came in at 5.05, wow. uh, done. And that was with fluids installed in the engine, ready to go. So let me put that in perspective a little bit for those that go, well, I don't, that number doesn't mean anything to me. If you look around here in this area, well, around here you may feel, find a few lighter airplanes. You go up to the other end where there's all kinds of LSA. The lightest of the LSA typically are around 700 pounds, maybe 650, that would be light. Yes. Most of them are around 800 pounds. So your number of 505, you said? Yes. Uh, that's so low, you're right, it is almost like, I don't believe it, let yeah, me see. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, well, the proof of it is in the performance of the airplane, and I've been showing that off this week, and just been having a blast doing, I think my takeoff rolls have been running 125 feet or so, granted with just one person in it, but... Uh, but on a, on a kind of a lumpy grass yeah. runway, all due respect to the volunteers that try and make it smooth, it's grass, it's got lumps. Yeah, well, we've been flying off of this runway, and my goal every time I take off is to be at pattern altitude, which is 300 AGL by the time I hit the end of the 900-foot <laughs> runway. And I'm just about getting there, so I'm doing these wonderful, fun VX climbs, and I'm just pretending I have a 300-foot tree at the end of the runway. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so give me some numbers about how that actually works yeah. out. Uh, what, what is the climb rate on the aircraft? Uh, I, You've asked the one thing I can't give you the final definite answer on. We think it's greater than a thousand feet at sea level. The problem is, is that with all, it was 107 in Wichita. It's very hard to correlate density altitude down to the sea level in the standard conditions. But we think better than a thousand at gross at sea level on a standard day. Uh, I have been seeing, for instance, this morning, I was seeing around 700 something on my climb rates uh, coming up. So it's really a quick climber. All right, very cool. Well, when you're cruising along with it, let's talk about some yeah. numbers there and some fuel consumption things. Uh, so tell me about that. Did you fly the airplane here? Yes, okay. sure did. So you've got a, how far is that for you? Uh, 630 nautical miles, around okay. 700 statute. All right, so there's a great little test. Talk to me about that flight, James, about how long it took you, what your sure. fuel burn was, what your cruise speed was. Sure, we broke it into two days. I just did a four and a half, four hour and 15 minute leg on the first day from Wichita to Des Moines. Uh, and then on the second morning, I left Des Moines, 
uh, made it here in three hours and 15 minutes, a total of seven and a half hours in the air. Uh, so average ground speed was just under 100 miles per hour. Uh, the uh, true airspeed cruise 75% with these 21 inch tires. Uh, we're hitting 90. Okay. Uh, and uh, full power wide open throttle, 5,000 feet. Uh, it's at or better than 100 miles per hour true. You can go for uh, six hours plus reserve, burning okay. 4.2 gallons an hour. Wow, you got so a lot of range there. Unrefueled, uh, you're far beyond 500 miles with the big tires. Cool. All right, so let's talk about how the airplane is delivered to someone. It's a kit, correct? Absolutely. Okay, and uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, we've got it broken into two parts, what we call the airframe kit and then a finishing kit. The airframe kit is uh, uh, everything that you'd expect to make it look like an airframe. The finishing kit is all of the lift struts, control cables, uh, control items, um, not the fuel tanks, not the cowl, but everything else. So at the end of it, what you need to add is engine, prop, instruments, glue, paint. We include all the nuts, bolts, hardware. We even include the rivets to put it together. We don't include the covering. So between the two, complete kit, traditionally firewall back. Okay. And um, you, the project is a new one for you. You just announced this, uh, maybe at Sebring, wasn't yeah. it, when you first yes. talked about it at all? That's correct. So that's only literally a few months ago. And now you're flying with it, you're, you're getting close to production, but are you in production? Yet? We're actually, we've been producing parts for kits now for about two and a half months. Oh, okay. Building so. up parts to deliver. And okay. we're doing our first kit deliveries in August. Okay. Uh, and we're planning to consecutively deliver kits from here to the end of the year. We've already built a pretty good order back. Have you? Okay, great. Thank if you. I said, sign me up today, when would I get one? Uh, sometime later this fall. Okay. Not too bad then. I'd actually tell you, talk to my wife. <laughs> she controls when they go out the door. Okay, but at any rate, not too far in the future. No, it's not a year away a, or something like that. We're, we've got around 20 on the books now, and we want to get 30 delivered before the end of the year. Okay, great. Well, best of luck with that. Okay, so a lot of great information about the chipper with the 80 horsepower bulletproof Rotax. I love to always say those two words together. And uh, tell me how we find even more stuff, how we contact you, or how we just place an order, James. Sure. Well, uh, two places. First of all, go to Belite, B-E-L-I-T-E, aircraft.com. Find us on the web. And also, we've got uh, a lot of people following uh, the, the daily developments on Facebook. Just search Belite Aircraft on Facebook, and you'll find us there as well. Where I'm a prolific poster. Love to talk about what we're doing. All right. You do a good job of that. A lot of information out there for people to see and to keep up with you as things go on. Lots of stuff we've had about uh, B-Light Aircraft, B-Light Electronics, the uh, instrument part of the company, and uh, lots of other affordable aviation available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining James Weeby and myself here at the ultralight area of EAA AirVenture Oshkosh.